okay, so uh, we're asked to find, uh, let's see here. Uh, we're given that the, the volume of an expanding sphere is increasing at a rate of 12 feet cubed per second. Uh, and then it's asking when the volume is at uh, 36 pi feet cubed, how fast is the surface area increasing? And luckily we are given the uh, equations for the volume of a sphere, which is four thirds pi r cubed, and the surface area of the sphere, which is four pi r squared. Um, so a question like this is a classic related rates type of problem. Um, this is really testing your ability to use the chain rule really very um, uh, well, I guess, and then kind of understanding how the chain rule works and how um, you can use that to answer these types of questions. So in this case here, um, the best thing to do to start is to write down the things that you know, right? Okay, so we are given, of course, these things. Now, of course, we're looking at these uh, these formulas, and these are functions here, um, and we have one variable in these functions, which is r. So we could really look at these as functions of r, right? both of these, the volume and the surface area here. And that's gonna come into play a little bit later. So we're given that the, we're given the rate of change of the volume of this sphere, right? So um, it's saying it's increasing. So we can write this here in this form here. So the derivative with respect to time of that volume is given as 12 feet cubed per second. And um, we know the that thing there. Um, we are trying to find how fast the surface area is increasing. That's the main idea. How fast is that surface area increasing? So essentially what it's asking is what's that change in surface area as time goes on? And we can write that as the derivative of that surface area with, with respect to time here. Now we have very important things here. Now, if you remember how the chain rule works and remember how these related rates work, this expression here, d v of dt, is the same thing, again, referring to the, to the chain rule as this. I always, the way I always write these chain rule things is I do this because I say, okay, well, this dv dt, right? I want to figure that out. And for using the chain rule, I do the dv here and the dt here. And then I say, okay, well, v is with respect to r. So if I do that and then put the r up here, because you kind of, even though it's not exactly the same, it's kind of, you can kind of look at them as uh, fractions, if you will. And those, like those drs are canceling. So it's kind of the same thing. Now, the thing is, we can find this value, right? We just find the derivative of v with respect to r. And here we are, v with respect to r. So we find the derivative of that. In this case, it would be, so here we have dv dr, and that would be four pi r uh, squared, right? And dr dt is something we don't know, but we do know this. So if we then rewrite this, because we have dv dt, which is given as 12, dv dr we know, which is four pi r squared. Now, this is the thing we don't know, right? So let us put this, let's solve this equation for this. So when you divide everything out, you end up getting three over, oops, sorry, over pi r squared, right? And that is uh, dr dt. So we have one piece of the puzzle. Now, this is the thing we want to find. And just like we did here, let's do that again. Dt. And again, I'm going to write a ds here. I'm going to write a dt here. And then I do a dr because that s is, is uh, with respect to r, right? So uh, now ds dt is what we want to know. So that's the unknown. But now look at this. We, have, we can find ds dr by just finding the derivative of this. When we do that, that becomes 8 pi r. And look at that, we just found what dr dt was, which is 3 over 
pi r squared. You can simplify this, of course, and then you can make that 24 over r. Uh, now, from here, since we know what this is, and I'm going to um, not go much further, but this should give you enough to kind of go forward and solve this problem here. Again, what we need to know, because we, what we're given now, what we're asking is when, when this function, when, when the volume equals 36 pi, so when this equals 36 pi, r is a certain value, right? So if you find that value of r, then now you can figure out what DSDT is when r equals that. And it's as straightforward as that. So please let me know if you have more questions. I'm happy to answer them for you and good luck. Thank you.